So this past summer, I had this wonderful opportunity opportunity to connect with a gentleman that is on the podcast today. His name is CJ Rogers. And CJ, uh, actually in Harris County, uh, Department of Education, just in the Houston area, he gave me such a beautiful introduction and it really resonated with me. And I think the reason it resonated is because uh, it felt very personal. And that really meant a lot to me. Uh, a lot of times people will just read some bio that they find somewhere on a website. And there's something really powerful because he went into my content, but he didn't just go into my content. He talked about it and how it applied to him and what it actually had changed for him personally and how that affected him professionally. And he really told this really compelling story. He was absolutely brilliant in the way that he connected it to his personal life and, and then actually thought about actually making the professional connection to help his, um, his school or his organization move forward. And I thought that was really amazing. I thought it was really powerful. And when I talked to the group about his introduction, because I thought it was so masterfully done, I talked about how CJ actually really embodied the innovator's mindset, that he was actually displaying the things I was going to talk about today, that he was taking information that I had shared, information he had found, and he made his own way forward. He made his own conclusions. He talked about how he's moving forward. And when we were doing this podcast today, one of the things that really connected with me was how CJ talked about how he started to realize that some of the work he's done really did embody the innovator's mindset. And in an innovator's mindset, one of the things that I really wanted to talk about was how people already embody this mindset. And do you see yourself that, how are you actually creating new and better ideas? And if you really think about innovation, not being synonymous with technology, but about creating new and better ideas from the information you find, not just carbon copying and copying and, learning stuff so you can do it on Monday exactly the way that you learned it. But taking those ideas, really thinking about that, and then creating something better for yourself, for your students, that is the innovator's mindset. That's what I wanted to get people to understand is that they're already embodying this. And then once you start realizing that's what you're doing, then it becomes your norm. It becomes the practice that you do. And so when I was talking to CJ, it was a great reminder of how people are already innovating before they see this. But once you start seeing yourself in the picture, it changes things. You're going to love this conversation. CJ is absolutely awesome. It was so awesome to talk to him about not only education, but sports, but family. And uh, I hope you really enjoy it. It was my first uh, podcast with someone um, other than just me talking uh, since I moved. And it was, it, was a great, it was a great way to start it off. So I hope you love it. I loved it. Thanks for watching the Interviewers Mindset Podcast, listening wherever you're at. Hope you have a wonderful day. Enjoy the podcast. everyone welcome back to another episode of the innovators mindset podcast and i am really excited to have my friend cj rogers him and i connected this summer uh at harris county just it's just in houston right and uh yeah i had one of the just an amazing uh event and uh I, I was so excited uh to have you on i emailed you literally within hours i think uh to after the event to be on my podcast because i loved uh connecting with you and, I'll, and I'll, I'll share in a bit what really stood out to me that day and why mm -hmm. it was so powerful. But CJ, it is, uh, uh, as I shared in our other podcast, uh, you were someone from your own staff said, you got to have CJ on the podcast. I'm like, I already asked. I'm way ahead of you. Like, I agree. I got to have CJ on the podcast. So, uh, you know, getting through your junk mail and finally, and then you email me back. Uh, it was awesome to have you on. So CJ, if you could tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do today and how yeah. you got there, that's a great place to start. Yeah, man. CJ Rogers, straight out of Chicago, you know, no other way to put it. Uh, you know, I tell folks all the time, man, I was one of the few that hit the education lottery. Um, you know, I just had opportunity after opportunity and it wasn't because I was the smartest or the most gifted, you know, I just God's grace at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I've spent my entire career uh, as a teacher, as a basketball coach, as a, um, you know, principal, assistant principal, principal, chief of schools, and now as, uh, as an assistant superintendent, you know, trying to, for lack of other terms, destroy the education lottery. Like, mm -hmm. everybody's got a lottery ticket. Like, I want to be like Oprah. Here's your education ticket, you know, so on and so forth. Like, everybody <laughs> has one, man. Also um, from Chicago. It, also from Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chicago, yeah. Um, but you know, just, just really that, that's been my passion. That's, 
that's the fire that burns in my my spirit every single day in the be- belly of my uh, in my belly every single day. And so um happy to be here at Harris County Department of Education um doing doing some, you know, some really good work with some really great people. And is he, and this is I actually asked you this before the podcast, but then I wouldn't let you yeah. finish because I'm like, I want to know this. Can you share this <laughs> on the podcast? What does CJ stand for? Yeah, so CJ stands for Cleophas Jr., right? So I'm the second of three. So my son's name is Cleophas as well. And George, as you can imagine, I hated the name Cleophas, right? right. Like even sitting and talking to my grandmother, like, why would you name my dad that, right? Like, because I skipped right over my dad, right? Like, right. you right. didn't have a choice, right? But grandma, why did you name him that? You know, and she gave me all this long, eloquent answer. But I'm just like, but you don't have to sit in class tomorrow. And listen, everybody make fun of your name, so on and so forth, right? And so, you know, it got to the point where, like, you know, the first day of school when, like, it's time to call roll, you know, you you know when your name is coming up because yeah, it's Roger, so Ben Rodriguez, and then you know, like, okay, I mean, before the teacher could even call it out, right. I'd be like, CJ, CJ, it's CJ, you know, because it's that moment, right, when folks are like, right. Uh, right. whoa, so, so it's my senior year in college, and I go visit my advisor, and my advisor says, hey. You could either take this Greek mythology class or you can go do this term abroad in Greece, right? And I'm like, uh, sign me up for the term abroad in Greece, right? So right. I go to Greece and I take this class. Again, this is why we're so connected. That's what I'm saying. I'm telling oh I told you, you would, love, you would love this story. So I go to Greece and by far the best time of my life. Like, absolutely loved it. Beautiful country. Um just just beautiful right i turned mm-hmm. 21 over there um and so i'm there and i'm sitting with my my professor and she's like your name i was like yeah here we go again she's like it's biblical i was like yeah right. you know that's what my grandma says like yeah of course and she says you know it's actually greek as well so now my ears perk up i'm like right. really right. she's like yeah I was like, well, naturally, well, what does it mean? You know, and she says it means the good son. And so now I'm like, oh, you got to tell me more about this. So now I'm getting notebooks and everything. I'm like, I want to know everything. Right. And she's like, no, it means the good son. And so now I'm like, oh, it means a good son. Like, that's what it means. She's like, yeah. So now, like, I go back home and now I'm like, look. Everybody's like, CJ, I'm like, no, 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 no. It's Cleophis. I love please, it. Please call me Cleophis, right? And you can put the junior on there as well because you know Cleophis means a good son. <laughs> and so, um, you know, so naturally when I had my son, I was like, look, I told my wife, Sheree, like, look, I mean, it's got to be, you know, he's got to be Trey. He's got to be Cleophis third because, you know, the name, it means so much and it gives so much purpose. So, like, literally, I started acting different as, like, a 21-year-old when you find, you know, when you hear the perfect, now my grandmother's been saying it all along, right. but it, you know, you got to hear it from somebody else, you know? So, okay. So this is a little behind the scenes of the podcast. So what I do yeah. before we get on to the podcast, like before you and I record, we'll just sit and talk. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I asked you this and then you started talking and I saw you light up. I'm like, no, 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 I'm going to wait. <laughs> Cause I know whatever you're about to tell me is going to be a story that other people need to hear. This isn't just yeah. like, a, so I saw you light up. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, that's we're like sharing this. And I and like it's actually there's a there's a lot of intersection between kind of like uh, I was listening to you between some of the stuff that I think about from my own childhood, that mm-hmm. some of the stuff that we're most proud of as adults, we were most embarrassed of when we were kids. Man. And I think that, you know, like I remember my mom would talk Greek to me, and I'd be like, do not talk Greek to me. Right. Like, don't talk Greek to me. We're the only Greek family in our town. It was like, you know, I, it would really bug me. And yeah. probably one of my biggest regrets is not knowing how to speak Greek now. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, and that too. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the things when, when I hear that story and we think about how that work, you know, how, how important that is in the context of kids is really helping kids like, you know, embrace who they are, embrace, mm-hmm. you know, some of the, the uniqueness of their characteristics of the things that are, you know, from passed down from their families, things like that too. Mm -hmm. 
right? Because like it's a like when you said that, I was like, oh my god, that's like you know, <laughs> like the, the thing you were embarrassed about, right? And it's funny that it's Greek too, right? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the thing I was most embarrassed about when I was a kid was being Greek. And now it's like you know, I'll tell everybody, right? Like we just you know this, like we just moved uh, from Canada to the U.S. But if you ask me if I'm Canadian, I'm like, oh, no, I'm Greek. Yeah, <laughs> right, I'm Greek. You know, I've never yeah. like lived in Greece, or I'm Greek, right? And that that's something I'm very proud of too. So, yeah, like, it, it, it is. Uh, I, I I love that. So I gotta I gotta bring this up. So when we were uh, uh, when when I was out there at Harris County, uh, a lot of times people before I speak they'll do an introduction, and the one thing that uh, they'll say, "Do you have a bio?" I'm like, "Yeah, I do." But please, whatever you do, do not read it. Don't read it. Nobody cares about the accolades or anything that, you know, and it's not like I have any, but, you know, like I like, you know, and a lot of times somebody's not going to be like, if you're a terrible speaker, like, well, they went to Harvard and said their introduction. So like in my mind, I'll make it better. Right. So like <laughs> nobody cares. So I always say like, you know, make it personal. Yeah. And you did such an amazing job. And I was like, wow, like this guy like dug into my stuff to do this introduction. And what I, what I loved about it, and I think was really powerful for me, was you didn't just like say, hey, George talked about this and connected. You, you did, you actually, you, you t like, you made me feel very welcome for one, which yeah. is beautiful. Um, you really connected to your own personal life. And then you connected it to where you want to go in Harris County. And I thought it was yeah. so masterful the way you did it. And then like, like you're so good. I'm like, I don't want to speak with this guy. Keep talking. <laughs> this guy's really good. I want to, I want to see more from him. Right. And so it was like, it was really, yeah. it, it was really powerful. So like, can you like talk about like, you know, why you did it that way? And you know, yeah. like I, and what I, I'm going to do, I'm going to probably clip this out and then I'm going to say, Hey, if you're doing an introduction, watch this. Yeah. <laughs> Right, watch what this guy says and why he did it the yeah. way he did it because you know that would be really helpful probably to some groups because i think it helps me to bridge like the one of the things i talk about when i go into districts help me bridge your vision to the stuff that i'm talking about so we're not like in two different orbits right like i'm trying to connect the two and let, let me connect to your vision so that people aren't feeling this is like hey i got to do this thing that harris county says and this thing it's like no 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 they're they're actually they're very well interconnected and you made it super easy for me to do it that day because of the way um you you connected my work to yours but you did it on a personal level and a professional level so like tell me like your thinking behind like how you you went about that process yeah i mean I, you you have spoke at tasa midwinter which is like yeah. a big conference here in texas right and so my team came back and they were like, look, we need to get this guy. Right. And so, you know, before normally I, before I say yes, I'm like, okay, let me do some homework. Right. Right. And so, you know, I started listening to, you know, Google you, you know, I'm not big on social media yet. Right. Right. Uh, but I After started, this podcast, you, know, you will be. I know. I know. I started, I, <laughs> I started listening to, you know, some of your stuff, man. And I was like, man, this guy, like, yes, yes, that's it. Like that. <laughs> That's exactly what we need to be talking about. Um, and then I got to a podcast where you were being very vulnerable. Yeah. Um, and you talked about your move. Um, and that really resonated with me because we were shifting sort of gears here at Harris County. Um, and I was like, man, like that, that's, that's it right there. That, that's, that's kind of, it's something that, and, and it wasn't, I mean, it was, it was a content, but it was your delivery too, George. Like you were, you were just, and, and man, and, and it connected with me, right? And I've been talking a lot recently, you know, about connection. Like I need to do a better job about connecting with people and making people feel, um, feel at home, feel, feel personal, especially during tough times, right? Uh, and so it, it was that podcast. And so I was like, man, He's talking about innovators mindset. I completely agree with that. Like throughout my career, I've, I've tried to demonstrate that. Uh, and it was like, man, this guy has put it in a framework like that. It's perfect how he, you know, explained it. Um, and I was like, man, it'd be great if I just demonstrated that. Like what, what's mm -hmm. the best totally. form of, you know, a flattery is, you know, like mastery of your content. Right. right. And so, you know, I was like, man, when, when have I, you know, and, and, and what you talked about was, 
you know, initiating change, right? Like if you want change to happen, it, it, change is better when you initiate it, right? Totally. Or easier. 100%. Um, Way easier. And, yeah. And then you used to talk about going from, you know, a comfortable average to a better unknown, right? And I was like, man, that's what we're trying to do. And I was like, okay, let me think back to my life where that has happened. That's not right now, right? Hmm. And I just started thinking and I was like, man, that's when my kids were born, right? Like, who who is like, yeah, I want all the pain that goes with being a parent. <laughs> right. But yeah, everybody is like, yeah, I want all the pain that goes along with being a parent, right. right? And it's like, man. So I was like, let me figure out how to shake this and set this up. And it was one thing you said on your podcast is like, you know, I go to these districts and I can tell when, you know, they're just trying to fill time. I was like, that is not going to be me. Like, right. we will not be a time filler. Like, we're going to maximize because what he has to say, everybody needs to hear it. And I need to make sure that I do a good enough job of setting the table so that you feel comfortable, right? But then yeah. also, people are ready to listen to what you are about to deliver. You know, and yeah. I, I even said it during that time. I said, look, George is going to drop some nuggets here for us today. <laughs> Right. Some nuggets, man. And it's on us to really take that and um and and, and and really make it our own. And so, you know, I just I just really tried to set the table. And again, I'm a basketball player. Derrick Rose is my favorite player. So I'm just trying to throw the assist. And you even said it, man. You set me up nice. You gave me a nice assist. I understand. Um, so that, well, that, it was, that's, that's what it, it was like the thinking. it was the I remember like distinctly it was the embodiment. You're like, so I took this information. Here's how I actually created, like basically applied it to my own life, to my own circumstance. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, this is the, basically what CJ just did is actually mm -hmm. the embodiment of the innovator's mindset, because I can actually come in here, not know your organization, give you some mm -hmm. ideas and then fix all your problems. You have yeah. to take the stuff that I'm talking about, ask how it applies. And that's like, you know, I, I've been saying this to lots of groups lately is like, Look, I, I'm not the determinant of this, if this PD is good or not, it's you, yeah, you actually have absolutely. to take the ownership of your own learning. And so mm -hmm. when you're saying, well, how does this apply to me? Well, you're the expert, you figure that out. Right. Yeah. And so I think that the way you embody that, it was like, oh yeah, like do what just CJ just did. <laughs> right. Like, and then you'll, you'll be good. And it was like such a easy yeah. way to actually do this. Um, you, you did mention this and I'm curious, like I, you, you mentioned it a little bit. I know that your wife, and we're gonna give her a little, yeah. even though there she got the other one. You got yeah. well, that's my she, baby. He's been listening to the podcast, and you said you've been having some really great conversations at home about this yeah. stuff. And like one of the things I really appreciated that you just talked about was like you took that was actually a non. I think this is why the personal aspect of, for me is so important. You took a non-educational podcast I did that had nothing about, it was about me doing a personal thing, but then you tied it to education. And I think a lot of times we actually hide the personal stuff because we think that those doesn't apply, but I'm like, no, it's about learning. That's, yeah. that's what, that's, if you can't make that connection, that's where like, you know, like a lot of these things that, you know, I've learned in education and vice versa. Some of the stuff that I see outside of education has get, been the most important lessons inside the classroom. So like when people say, well, I don't want to listen to this person they haven't taught ever. I'm like, if you can't make your own connections to the profession, then we're in trouble, right? Because if it's just like, yeah. here's education in this own silo, but nothing else outside the world, world uh, outside of this world matters, then what, how is that actually helping kids? So I thought that was really powerful is that the one you picked was the most non-educational one that I <laughs> did. And then you connect it to education. But what are some of the what are some of the conversations that are happening at home from the podcast? Yeah, man, you know, and I, I told I had to be careful because I was like, <laughs> my wife had PD that day, so she couldn't come, and I was like, I sent her a text message and said, "Hey, you would love this guy." And I was like, <laughs> "Hold on, wait, no, no, let me take the no, no, I'm the only guy you love." <laughs> but you know, I mean, man, to 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 really be to really be transparent. Right. Like a lot of what I got from that day, mm -hmm. I was like, man, I need to apply this into how I am as a father, you know, yeah. as a husband. Um, and I told you in the email that I sent, you know, um, just been trying to, you know, technology is taking over. Right. Mm -hmm. And I've always been that guy. Like, oh, I've always been that father. I should say that has been like, no nope, technology only on the weekends. You can't have it during the week. And then you came in and you're like, man, how 
how are we utilizing like the world is technology how are we utilizing that to you know improve lives to you know educate so then i'm like okay i got to get the schedule together my wife and i we need to get the schedule together for the kids summer we've been very lax and so my wife's like hey so the no technology and i'm like no i'm i'm backing off that right right and she's like what because you know stubborn so like what Oh my God, you're back. And I'm like, yeah, I'm backing off that. And I'm like, Hey, let's figure out how we can utilize this. Um, because the kids are going to need it as they, you know, they're in fifth, third grade and kindergarten. They're going to need it. Like it's not going away. Um, and so my wife and I, we sat down, we, we devised a plan. We are like, no, nah, there's a set time in the day for technology. However, before you get on it to do whatever it is that you want to do, whatever your vice is, the YouTube's, uh, you know, the TikToks, whatever it is, you got to make a video. And in that video, you have to tell one person who has made you happy. They did something very small to make you happy. And then you got to talk about what you did to make someone else happy. And literally, George, I don't even have to tell the girls to make the video anymore. They're just like, okay, I need to make my video. Oh, I'm going to talk about this person today. I'm going to talk about so-and-so the next day, you know. And I'm like, man, the where we can go from there, like is, is endless. Right. So the first day my te- my, my daughter talks about her teacher. Right. So I'm like, Oh, I'm sending this to the teacher. Right. Like I'm gonna wait to the dog days. Right. And send it to her and just be like, Hey, look, the first day that, you know, Morgan and Chloe had you in their class, this is what they had to say about you. Thank you for being that, you know, that teacher for my kids. Right. I mean, it Powerful. that's just one Avenue. It can go so many right. different ways. So, Man, I appreciate you and thank you for for that push. Uh, well, the, because... the, way, the, the way you just articulated that was like really powerful because I think a lot of people, when they hear me, when I talk about this stuff, they just think that it's like, okay, so I'm like a no technology person. Now I just got to open the floodgates and just let people yeah. do whatever they want. They're like, no, 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 no. And you actually <laughs> said something like, it's how, it's how we get them to utilize it, right? So like, you know, some people and they're like, well, we're not going to let phones in after this because kids are like watching inappropriate stuff, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, but Mm -hmm. are you actually trying to get them to actually create something that's really good? Right. Because like you're just sitting there like thinking the world is just going to actually talk to them, but you're not actually teaching them how to talk to the world, not actually connecting them with that stuff, too. Right. And so what you did, which is really powerful, wasn't just like you went from uh, no to yes. You're like you went no to like, okay here's here's the way we got to start to think different so our kids are actually creating stuff not yeah and i think that's was that like such a powerful example that you i just love yeah. that too. and like you know hey. even even you and i on this podcast like me listening to you kind of dig into my stuff helps me yeah. better understand my own stuff because mm-hmm. we're having a conversation that we wouldn't be able to have if it wasn't for this piece of technology right yeah man yeah And, you know, and and again, like uh, I'll say it again, like I I thank you for the framework, you know, because so like, for example, when I was a principal, one of the things that, you know, my staff would, you know, would always talk about is, man, these kids listen to such vulgar music. Like the music is so, is you know, and I was like, okay, well, let me think about how can we turn that on its head? So, you know, what me and my team did, well, we were like, look, we're going to make a mixtape. And they're like, what? A um, mixtape? How would you make a mixtape? So I said, no, hear me out. We're going to take all the instruments because they don't care about the lyrics. The kids aren't listening for the lyrics. They care about the beat. Like, they love the mm-hmm. rhythm. So I said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take every instrumental from every hot song and every week, or I'm sorry, every month, we're going to make a, 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 a song, right? And I mean, it's only so many words that you can rhyme with college. Like, so it was college, knowledge, knowledge, college, you know. Love it, love it. Right? But we made the mixtape, George, and the complete culture of, of, of the school changed because now, you know, I'll be walking the halls and, you know, a kid doesn't have their shirt tucked in or whatever the case may be. I'm like, oh, you know what? Volume 12 of the mixtape coming out. And I don't think you want to be on. And kids are like, oh, let me tuck, let me tuck my, I can be on volume 12? Like, yeah. You can actually produce it if you, you know, if you, if what's that report card? Know. Get all those A's. Like, right. man, you you can be executive producer, right? And then I had a music teacher who was just as crazy as me, right? So he'd see him and he'd be like, man, I'm working on the album cover. Who who should I, it's written by who? Should I be putting your name down here or somebody? Man, and we just, 
it, it just took off, man. But again, I didn't know that was an innovator's mindset. So now here you are with the framework and I'm I'm texting my music. She's like, look, that's it. This is what we were doing right yeah. here. You know. Uh so man, appreciate you for, you know. Um, well, and that, so that, was actually, this together. that was actually one of the goals of the innovators mindset was to like people a lot of times didn't see themselves as innovators mm -hmm. and it was actually saying like, Hey, this is about creating new and better opportunities. And then them mm -hmm. starting to see. So if you start seeing yourself in the picture, then, the, then it's easier to become right. Like mm -hmm. if you start seeing, I already mm -hmm. do that with this and this, and then it becomes your norm, right? Like that's just mm -hmm. the way you do things, which I think is really powerful. Okay. I'm going to put this on wax, man. Okay. So I'm yes. going to right now. <laughs> So I told you before, I got Orlando Magic season tickets, right? Yeah, you yeah, tell me, Derek, Derek Rose, I don't, where is he going this year? Do you know? Is he, like, I don't know, man. He's with the Knicks right now, correct? Yeah, he is. He All is. right. You, you, hey, listen, Derek Rose, your favorite player. You, you tell yeah, me man. when you look at the Orlando Magic schedule, you want to come down okay. here. It's a, it's a Houston, it. Orlando is a short flight. It's, it is a short flight. It is. Well, a you short tell flight. me and we'll go. I'll take you, man. Okay. Right? Man, yeah, so, I'm going to hold you to that. Well, you, you don't have to. I put it on. It's recorded. That's what I put yeah, it. So you you're like, you like, if you call me, you're like, look, I'm going to play the tape. I'm going to play the tape. So, like, you did you did yeah. you put it out to the world? So, I, I'll make sure. Because, I like, I'd love to go with you, man. That'd be awesome. So, yeah, we'll man. I appreciate that. All right. So, I got to ask you this. So, yeah. uh, we talked about, um, you know, when we were at Harris County, one of the things that you're doing is you're really kind of rethinking about, you know, how, how I don't I don't even think, it, like, I, I don't want to say teacher engagement. It's really kind of teacher empowerment. And yeah. you talked about um, your alternative certification uh, program. What is that? Can you explain to people what it is and like, why is it beneficial? Like, so what are you doing and how is it actually, how do you see it as, as beneficial, not only to the staff, but honestly to kids as well? Yeah, man. So, you know, um, so just in general, the alternative certification program is there, there are a ton out there across the country. Um, Texas is big in Texas, you know, uh, I, and I can't remember the number off the top of my head, but I, I think it's close to 75 percent of the teachers in the state of Texas are alternatively certified. Right. right. And essentially what it is, it's, it's, it's a um, it's a way for folks who have a bachelor's degree who didn't you know, go to school to be teachers. They want to shift careers. They can get this alternative certification. They can be alternatively certified in less than a year and be teaching in our schools. Right. right. Great. The concept is phenomenal. Right. But what has happened is we see that, you know, there are certain pieces to the traditional approach to student teaching. The classroom lived experiences that you need walking into the classroom. Well, you don't necessarily always get that in the alternative certification program. And so what happens is just as fast as they're coming into the profession, they're leaving even faster. Right. For whatever various reasons. Right, right. Can't pass the state test just, you know, realize that teaching isn't for me. You don't have the necessary support, so on and so forth. I mean, there's a ton of research out there. Um, but the beautiful thing about working here at Harris County Department of Ed, we can look at a complex challenge and we can actually do something about it, right? And so, you know, we sit there and we said, man, look, we see that this is happening. We need to do something about it because at the end of that teacher leaving, mm -hmm. right, there's a student that's relying on that teacher for whatever reason. And that student isn't getting that need um, met or they're not getting, you know, they're not getting fed like they need to get fed. And so, you know, our superintendent and our school board, man, very audacious, um, trusted me and my team to, to lead the approach to really, I wouldn't even say flip alternative certification on his head, but to really beef it up, right? Put the layers of support on there needed so that these teachers who come in with the intent on being educators for a long time, they have the support and the resources to do so. And so, you know, we're doing stuff where um, in the beginning of your, your, your alternative certification program, we're, we're, we're layering in pieces to where you get that school experience, right? Be it as a substitute, be it as a volunteer, be it as, you know, a teacher assistant, uh, whatever the case may be. And the key piece, George, is that we're partnering with districts with like with a like mindset who are saying, look, we need to fix this and we're willing to do whatever we need to do to do so. And so one of the districts we're partnering with here locally, um, Spring Independent, uh, Spring ISD, the superintendent said straight up, hey, I don't want my teachers 
taking classes at night or on the weekend. Mm -hmm. And we're like, we don't either. So she's like, look, I want to, I'm going to free them up on Wednesday so that they can sit in the program. They can get the job embedded learning that they need. And you guys do, you know, do whatever it is that you need to do so that they don't have to spend time on weeknights and on weekends trying to learn. And I was like, look, that's exactly what we need to be like. That's exactly what we need to do. That's the innovative thinking that we have to have. <laughs> I, I was because, just I mean, that. Yeah. I mean, the teachers yeah. are telling us straight up, this is why we're leaving. Right. And, right. you know, we got, we got to do something about it. And so just really excited about the district partnerships that we're forming. Um, I'm excited about the teachers. You met some who are in the program right now mm-hmm. uh, when you were there. Uh, we're excited about them because they they see it and they're excited about, you know, where this thing can go. Um, and, you know, just 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 excited to really provide a sound solution uh, to 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 a um, to to an issue that, you know, is plaguing our kids. Look, you only get to do second grade once, man. Right. So we want to make sure that it's the best experience that you can possibly that. have. I love that. The, 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 the one, a couple of things that I was thinking about when you're talking about this, that first of all, yeah. if we say, if we say it's important, then you got to put time and resources behind it. Right. Mm-hmm. So the, the second you say you have to do this on your own time as an administrator, you're also saying it's really not yeah. that important. Right. Yeah. So that's yeah. one thing. But the other thing, when we're talking about the innovators mindset, like again, embodying it. And it's funny because I know that you were doing this before you started you know, look at my work and now you're like, Oh yeah, that's me being that. Right. Yeah. Cause you took like a problem. You said like, Hey, here's what's going on. We know, we know these things, but how can we actually make it better? How can we create this? Right. So you didn't just take, say like, okay, here's what this group is doing. We'll just do that. You're like, Hey, yeah. like we're learning from that, but here's other things that we're going to do that like are kind of the Harris County solution. I love that you're working with other districts too, which is powerful. All right, man. Yeah, man. We're we're like we're like we're like over time already. So, <laughs> and I, I love talking to you. Seriously. Yeah. Now I gotta do sports. You gotta do sports. Come on, let's do it. Favorite uh, football player of all time. I gotta know who it is. The sweetness. Walter, Walter Payton. Payton, man. Walter my guy. Payton. My guy. Walter Payton. Man. Hey, man. You know. Love you know Walter what? Payton. So I actually I don't know why I can't remember his name. I have one Chicago Bears jersey. Yeah. I have one Chicago Bears jersey, and I don't know what I was thinking, but it was uh, it was uh, what is I can't remember the quarterbacks. It was uh, Jay Cutler. And I was Jay like, why, Cut- would I, why would I get Jay Cutler jersey? George, you like him? What? You like Jay Cutler? No, but I had a Jay Cutler jersey, man. <laughs> really? too, so yeah. because we were so kinda, desperate for a quarterback, man. I kind of like him. I kind of, I still kind of like him. Like I, I you know, uh, Rex Grossman was like one of my, like yeah. he was like kind of like my favorite and the most hated player depending on the week right like he was just it was like he would go for like 500 yards a game and then like 18 interceptions the next he was amazing right um but uh devin hester i actually think lives in orlando just so you know he was just say we might see a devin hester sighting devin hester loves him yeah okay all right so so you you grew up in chicago were you there during the bulls like jordan and the bulls Okay, George. So I got a confession here. My mm-hmm. friends, they they won't fully understand it. So I was there during the Jordan Bulls, oh, no. but I, I, I got to admit, I never fully appreciated them the way that I should have because right. I was so. I mean, I was a Bears fan, man. Chicago is a Bears town, yeah. and I was a Bears fan, and they were just like, "How is how is Walter Payton your favorite athlete ever?" Right? You right. set in the town where Michael Jordan, the greatest athlete ever played. And I'm like, uh, you know, it's still, okay, it's still you a bear's know? town. It's still a bear's. Yeah. It'll always be a bear's yeah. town. Right. Always man. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed the boys. I, I didn't appreciate them as much as, you right. know, and I'm paying for it right now. Right. Because <laughs> they'll be good. They'll be well, they're, they're good. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, uh, do you know, um, so I, it's funny that you say that because I actually did not. I hated Jordan. I hated Jordan so really? much. I did. Well, because I'm, I'm like, I grew up a Lakers fan, right? Oh, okay. And so like, okay. you know, so, you know, like in Jordan. And then he left. And then when he came back, like, it was like boring without him. And then he came back. I was like, oh, I actually really like him. <laughs> you know, it actually took him going away. Like talk yeah. about absence yeah. making hair grow fonder, right? Man. Like when he left and then yeah. he came back, I was like, oh my God, it's so much better when he's here. 
right? So like, <laughs> oh yeah, that's a, uh, that's a, uh, and you, you can see behind me, right? I got the Kawhi, you know. Yeah, I got, man, I see that. that I was time. there. I was there. Yeah. Got the Wheat and Norris. So, uh, yeah. But hey, man, CJ, CJ, like, it, dude, it was so awesome to sit here and talk to you, man. Yeah, man. What a light yeah, you are man. in the world. So, um, one, I, I love that. I, I know I said this already, but one of my favorite things was that I knew immediately, I'm like, I got to get this guy on the podcast, but I yeah. just love that one of your staff right away reached out to me and said, you got to get CJ on the podcast. <laughs> and, yeah. and I beat her to it, but also that you recognized it. So like, <laughs> yeah. it tells me, it tells me everything about you, like how much you influence people in such a short time, which is really, really powerful. So uh, I know your administrator, Liz saw something that we all get to see now, which is, which is absolutely yeah. beautiful. So CJ, uh, that, if people want to connect with you after the podcast, where I know yeah. you didn't say you're on social media much, but now let's let's change that. Where? Yeah, you? no. So I do have a Twitter handle. Um, okay. My Twitter is, you know, at Mister CJ Rogers. Um, you know, and, and maybe maybe again, this is the thing that that gets me jump started, George. You've been you've been so critical um, yeah. in, in helping me continue to grow and develop as a leader. So you know, I, I do want to get in this space and. And you know that, that that's where they can find me. I do have one question for you, George. Before we do it, all right. What advice? What advice would you? Because I know you know podcasts and you know different um, modes of learning are, are important to you know a lot of folks. You know, and and I've had folks on my team really talk about this. So, what advice would you give you know someone who is looking to start a podcast, right? Like to to have an impact. What advice would you give them? Okay, so. This and I think this is like I know this is gonna sound really weird just to start mm -hmm. it, just to go. And yeah. like a lot of people, this is this is I know this is something that has separated me from other people in some avenues of education. Mm -hmm. I will start something as soon as I get the idea, and then I'll figure out the logistics later. Mm -hmm. Some people will do all the logistical stuff mm -hmm. first, and they'll like, and sometimes they'll use an excuse like, hey, I need this, I need to have this. I need to have this. So like when I started my pot, when I started this podcast, it's actually funny. Cause some, I don't know if, I don't know if you have an iPhone, but it's like, sometimes my old podcast, like accidentally downloaded into my iTunes. So like I'm shuffle and I'm like, this is something really good. And then all of a sudden it's me talking. And yeah. some, some of the podcasts I actually used to do, I would take a mic. And I, when I'd be like driving in between events, I would just start yeah. talking on the mic and say like, this is a podcast. Right. Yeah. And so like, uh -huh. that was like some of the stuff that I started. And I remember when I said, you know, I'm going to really try to like do this. I started by just having a mic hooked up into my phone. Yeah. And then as I got more into it, then I started saying, you know what, you know, I need like a little TikTok light, you know, I need that. <laughs> that thing going on. I want to get a better mic, things like yeah. that too. So I think a lot of times we over plan stuff that we don't ever do mm -hmm. and where yeah. you think, like do, do the stuff and then figure out the, the other parts after. Because I think, I think for me, one of the things that's really important, especially as an educator, is that people can actually go back and see us, you know, grow and see the process. But if it was like perfect and everything was set up perfectly when we started, I think it intimidates a lot of people from, well, I don't have that. I don't have the good camera. I don't have the good mic. I don't have the cool air, so the air, you know, air horn, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's just, yeah, I think it's, it's kind of, yeah. not to me, it's just, just go. Right. And I think I like gotcha. one of the things, the reason why I kind of coaxed you about social media is I, I get to meet really brilliant people all the time, all over the world. And yeah. so I'm sitting around this conversation with you and I really hope that other people get to connect with you after this, because your brilliance should be shared with the world and yeah. not only will you make an impact in your own district but it will start to spread when people see this idea and i know people want to mm -hmm. ask questions and stuff like that too and so a lot of people say and i know this about you like you're not gonna be like we're awesome we're doing this and like bragging it's just share yeah. your learning right just share your learning yeah. and that's what you did so masterfully because you actually said here's what i'm struggling with here's some of the stuff i'm yeah. doing and i think i think when people get caught up in like, I don't want to be bragging. I'm like, don't brag. Just share what you're learning and people will pick up their own lessons. Right. Yeah, man. So, all right, man. Well, Hey, say everyone, uh, say hi to everyone in Harris County, dude. It was we'll so do. awesome to connect with you again, man. So everyone yeah, man. You make sure you connect with CJ. Uh, we'll link his Twitter down below so you can find it there. But CJ say hi to your family as well. I know all your kids. Yeah. You said you told me this before the podcast, they're all yeah. attending the schools, the same school. Come for the on. Easiest carpool ever. I love it. Yes. One yes, carpool yes, lane, yes. that's it. So 
Hey, yeah. everyone. Thanks for listening. CJ, thanks for being on. Everyone else, have, everyone have a wonderful day. Thanks, George. Have a good day.